You're watching KFDX3 News at 10. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us. I'm Gwen Bevel. Oklahomans will head to the polls in less than two weeks to vote on legalizing marijuana for medicinal purposes. South of the border, the bathroom bill fizzled after the last legislative session, and it hasn't been a key talking point for this year's elections. Now it's top of mind for some Republicans at the Texas GOP convention. Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick says though the party didn't get its wishes, it still succeeded. Well, with the announcement from Wichita Falls District 3 City Councilor Brian Hooker that he will not seek re-election, three candidates have already put their name in the mix to take that seat. According to the City Clerk's Office, Rick Hatcher, Katie Britt, and Jeff Browning have all applied for the seat. The deadline to apply for District 3 Councilor is coming up on June 22nd. Hooker says his biggest accomplishments have included helping the city get out of the drought, as well as texting while driving restrictions and the comprehensive smoking ban. He says although it's not always an easy job, helping improve the city is what makes the job so rewarding. For more than 30 years, members of the Wichita Falls sorority have dedicated their time to give back to the community in any way they can. Katia Guillaume spoke to some of the ladies of Alpha Kappa Alpha today as they were out setting up for tomorrow's big fundraising pancake breakfast. <laughs> and if folks head out bright and early in the morning, they get to see your smiling <laughs> face, right, Katia? I'll be there. <laughs> you are part of that sorority, I am. which is very special. <laughs> I'm, we appreciate everything y'all do of in the course. community. All right. Well, fans of Western Swing are in Wichita Falls right now, kicking up their boots and having a fun time down at the Impact. The Legends of Western Swing Festival, now in its 31st year, was started to honor the legacy of Western Swing musician Bob Wills and the Texas Playboys. Gloria Myers and her last husband, Dewey, started the festival in Canton, then moved it to Snyder, and then brought it here to Wichita Falls 18 years ago. Myers says people not only from Texoma, but even as far as London and Tokyo come to this festival. But ironically, Myers, now 92 years young, wasn't always a fan of the now official state music of Texas. She is a hoot. She'd be worth the price of a ticket just to meet her and shake her hand. The festival continues tomorrow from 11 until 11. Well, the Wichita Falls Area Food Bank is running low on volunteers and donations. Jaron Sport was there today, and Jaron, what's causing the big shortage? All right, Jaron, I hope a lot of folks step up and help out. Well, as part of the 81st Shriners Oil Bowl festivities, a very special guest made his way to Texoma. Alec Kaba Kenyon says that Shriners are like family to him. He's been active with the organization since he was just two years old. Alec has osteogenesis imperfecta, also known as brittle bone disease, and has already broken 60 bones. His condition is certainly not slowing him down, though, as he's already graced the court during an NBA game. Alex says Shriners have been there to help him with surgeries and rehabilitation. He says he can never thank them enough. Well, every year, each Next Star station spends the anniversary of our parent company volunteering in the community. Today, Derek Lowe followed the KFDX family out and about as they volunteered, and he has more. Today, I volunteered with a group at the Central Boys and Girls Club, and as you can see from the photo right there on your screen, I placed second in our very intense paper airplane contest. In first place, our creative services director, Alec Madsen. In third, the producer of this very show, the great Dewey Cooper. And coming in with the participation trophy, if you want to call it that, Josh Alvarez from our creative services department. Now, through building paper airplanes, kiddos at the club can learn about STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, as well as problem solving. And for your viewing pleasure, I brought the second place winning airplane. I mean, look at this design. It's, uh, it's one heck of a design here. There you go. You can take a look at it. Let's see if it'll fly. It does still fly. Well, there's a big release at the box office this weekend. Coming up right after weather, we're going to take you to the theater to see what's new and what's making waves. And in What the Tech, an app that will help you calm down. Stay with us. 115 people die each and every day due to overdoses, far more than die in traffic accidents. Tonight, one man is sharing his journey so that others will see it is never too late to turn your life around. Right, you know? right. Randy was just 11 when he took his first sip of whiskey. I remember how it burned and how it warmed my belly, but then I remembered that, that fear 
was kind of subsided. You know, I, I didn't really have that fear. And with each drink and drug, the fear subsided more and more, and soon was no concern at all. He was introduced to treatment facilities at a very early age and was going in and out of juvenile facilities. Alcohol and drug abuse soon became a way of life for Randy and his wife until they were fighting the battle alone without each other's support and with his wife in a coma in a hospital, Randy was left in charge of their sons. When I left, I went and picked up our two young boys and they were three and two at the time and uh, before I went and picked them up, I went and got loaded. I mean, because that's what I do. I went and got really intoxicated and um, I went and picked them up and before I got home, I totaled the car on a part suburban and you know so that's that's what I do that I had to do something different you know I had to do something different the changes he made likely saved his life but many of those who get addicted to opiates find out too late the risk they pose according to data from the National Institute on Drug Abuse 29 people lost their lives to overdoses in Texas in 99. That number jumped to 1,375 people in 2016. Just the year before that, 15.9 million opiate prescriptions were written by doctors in Texas. So, this is my technician's office. Uh, most of the testing would probably happen in here. Licensed clinical psychologist Dr. Timothy Nyberg often evaluates people who have substance-related concerns. For the vast majority of people, probably you know, their initial exposure to some sort of an opiate you know, agent right, was through a legitimate um, medical complaint. He says opiates have been commonly prescribed for pain for 30 years. In the 90s, fears doctors had long held of the addiction power of painkillers subsided with a new study that argued the risk risk was not high for patients with no history of prior addiction. So prescriptions started flowing, landing in the hands of not just patients, but also family members and friends and out on the streets. But with a spike in deaths from overdoses in the last decade, the CDC has been trying to fund research for more effective treatment programs. That doesn't really impact your kind of boots on the ground, your treatment staff, uh, you know, at least not presently. Um, Having said that, uh, in the medical community, I know that there is just a greater degree of consciousness that when somebody comes in the, the, the door who has a pain complaint, right, that there's kind of a red flag that gets associated with that. And after years of fairly common and routine prescribing of opiates for pain, Dr. Nyberg says when doctors began having concerns and more restrictions were put in place, it put people using the painkillers legally in a tough spot. Dr. Nyberg says a third of the population is now suffering chronic pain, so use or request for opiates remains high. Here in Wichita Falls, I think, or I, I sense that there's just been a greater collaboration between the folks who are doing primary care and the, kind of the gatekeepers you know, for treatment and then you know, members of the peripheral um, mental, and meta, mental health and medical community right, to provide you know, kind of support in all the vectors that contribute to, us, to substance you know, abuse and prevention. And that team effort is necessary since opioid addiction has no boundaries. How are you doing? How are you? Good. Everything all right? Yeah. Wichita Falls Police Sergeant Charlie Iper is a familiar face at Ryder High School. As a resource officer over the years, that where we see kids come to school with pills they have found or they have taken from family members that they have no idea what they're for, and then they come and either give them to somebody to take or they take them. And while Sergeant Iper says the consequences can be deadly, he sees signs the peak has been reached. He says over the last five years or so, they've seen a decrease in reports and arrests associated with opioids and students. Maybe there is some hope that there's uh, the kids are actually seeing enough uh, ambulances showing up to schools and picking up kids where they've heard the stories that eh, maybe that's not something we need to be doing. Sergeant Iper says many of the overdoses among youth could be prevented with a simple rule for all parents. Lock up all medications and document exactly how many pills are in each bottle. He says you're not just looking out for the safety of your own children, but also their friends. Start with whiskey. Randy says it was a friend of his brother who offered up that first sip of whiskey so many years ago. 
taken from the boy's parents' liquor cabinet. After 24 years of using every chemical he could get his hands on, Randy says he exchanged that fear for faith and is grateful he can still call the shots for his two young sons from the sidelines. I coach my son's soccer teams nowadays and stuff. And it's just, you know, it's, it had to, I just keep going, you know. And Randy will soon have a personal victory to celebrate, too. The beginning of July will mark seven years of sobriety. Randy says his best advice is to quit letting your ego and pride prevent you from reaching out for help. And there is help available when you need it. You can find several resources over at TexomasHomePage.com.